Welcome back everybody, this is Jason Seacrest and we are going to go through another step-by-step -step Adobe Illustrator tutorial. So through the comments this last week, we've had a lot of fun. A lot of people were requesting some more tutorials starting from the drawing. I'm going to give you the initial sketch and then we're going to walk all the way through this. So, so let's do this first. Let's just create a new file. I'm going to go five by five inches. That is pretty much standard on all of our tutorials just to make your life nice and easy. I am in CMYK today and then I have 300 PPI. So that is all default down at the bottom. I am just going to click on create. Now up at the top, I will give you a link. I'll give you a little bit of an I card. This is going to bring you better. So I am going to be placing is the snail sketch. We are just going to plop that right on down. So what we are looking to do is align it to the artboard and I'm just going to go horizontally and vertically so it is nice and centered in the middle of the artboard. I think I am just going to make our life easy today and come over to our layers menu. Let's just drop down and create a template layer and then I'm going to create a new layer above it and I'm just going to call this one inking. I do have my smart guides turned on. I am going to personally hide my artboards. You do not necessarily have to do that. I just think it looks a little bit cleaner in the video turn off our fill we are going to be dealing just in strokes we will give you the anchor point guide so i'm going to actually go off of this sketch today but i'll actually give you the the anchor point guide so you can actually see all of the handles as well as all of the anchor points so i'll give you those options if you are going through it let's just do some circles first now since we are doing strokes i'm just going to draw it out and then just see how close i get just drawing out it so that was me clicking. So just in case you're brand new to Illustrator, if you just click, you'll get a pop-up. I'm gonna click on C. C is our scissor tool. And all I'm looking to do is get rid of kind of that bottom half. So this is kind of the hybrid of I'm using shapes, but I'm actually going to be using the stroke form. So I don't actually want big solid shapes for this design. So if I select it, notice that I did a little snippet. So I got that out, but I do want this one hanging out on the corner. So if I click on minus, I can actually get rid of that one and I can almost connect the dots from here. So I'm gonna click on P. And so notice that it goes right into that armpit. I am on my pen tool, by the way. So notice that nice little slash. I might just say, hey, I want that to click here and then come on down and now we can actually finish part of that line. And I'm just seeing if I want to bring that out. I typically do do a little bit of overlapping on mine, so just be aware of that. That is just the anchor tool. And I'm just looking to see if that's a nice smooth curve. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to click on P. I am just going to look at each one of these and we're going to zoom in so you can see what we're doing. So the thought process is where does the line end? And those are the easy ones. And then I always recommend like if you see a corner, if it changes direction in any way, that is just a good signal to just blop down a nice wonderful anchor point. We can always add and take away. So just be aware that many of this stuff doesn't really matter because we're going to edit things anyway. And we can always take away, we can always subtract. So if things aren't smooth enough, we can always take away points and then adjust, adjust the handle. So notice that this is pretty much fitting on the bottom perfectly, but I want this to wrap back in. So I'm going to come up to the top. I am back on my anchor tool. That is our shift C, we use it quite frequently. And then I'm just getting a nice little, smooth little curve. Control zero is zoom out to the artboard, by the way. Let's just do this. So let's use our pen tool. I'm just gonna click where I see a change of direction. So anytime I see a little change, I'm just gonna plop down an anchor. And again, we can always take these away. So if it just kind of gets you through the line now I can come back. I'm back on my shift C by the way. Let's just smooth things out and see how we fare off. And this is kind of a little random curve. And I can just use my arrows. And again, white arrow if I ever want to adjust. White arrow if I want to adjust and move anchors. That looks okay. Now whenever we do multiple points like this, so notice that I clicked off. 
I'm just looking to see if this is a nice smooth curve. So if anything is off or if I say, hey, maybe I want to take away a point. So that is just the minus, by the way. So notice that there's a little minus next to my pen tool. So if I click up at the top, so if you go nine, zero, you'll see minus and then plus. So I can always take away points. If I come back with my white arrow, I can always come in, modify things. If I want to convert and do it again, so if I want a little bit of a smoother curve, I can always do that. So I can edit at any point. I can always modify. My rule of thumb for people getting started is just get down the lines and then we can always modify. So I'm just clicking. Whenever you see two, that is a good signal to just grab that path. I think that's probably going to be the easiest way of doing it. Little neck fat. I'm going to come back up to the top wherever I think the elbow might go and then I'm going to slap it back in. So shift C. Let's just zoom in. And then whenever I do my own, I go through a little bit more of an ugly phase than I normally would going through the anchors. So I'll just get down the line and then I'll say, all right, let's come in and let's clean it up. And again, this is on our, our last video, but I am a bigger fan of having kind of the anchor on the curve because this would be like our, usually it is signaling an actual body part. So like this is my point for the elbow. So if I think, hey, I want that elbow to be up a little bit more or out a little bit more, I can actually grab the point and then I can actually adjust it. So it actually is for a specific part of the body and then I can move it from there. So if I think it looks a little bit off or if I want it to come back in, I can always do that. So I might modify some of these. So notice that they're a little bit different that is a little bit of a thought process that I would come back to and edit. I'm just gonna plop that there. So notice that we're just flying around, change a direction. I'm gonna hold down shift right there so this might be a little bit flat. And let's just plop that back in. Now I am choosing to do some of these round corners first. I have a feeling we're not gonna need that belly button. And again, every time I do my lines, notice that we're doing everything nice and straight first. And then I can always come back in with my anchor tool and smooth things out. I'm gonna take this one, let's just minus. So again, I can always take away. So if I want it to be a little bit smoother, I can always come in, white arrow, and then just each one of those handles. So once you understand that you can always come in, take away, that should take away a lot of the anxiety let's just say oh let's let's see what happens let's see if we can be minimal so notice that it comes in and there's a little bit of a sharp corner so that should be your signal of I can grab that path let's just see what happens with this one and then when you grab the path notice that the handles are already being created so now I can just do some little tiny adjusting is it doing what I want all right that was it that looked pretty easy. And I'm just gonna drag it out. I'm gonna switch over to my white arrow. And then I can adjust those curves at any point. Seeing if I can match it up as best as possible. That looks good. I'm gonna take my circle, my nice little ellipse, and I'm just gonna flatten that out. So this little circle is actually gonna tuck in. And I'm just gonna leave that alone for right now. I am not holding down shift right now. I am just dragging it out. I'm just eyeballing it. That looks good to me. I'm gonna come in with my scissor tool. So I clicked on C and I'm just gonna get rid of that little little bit of overlapping right there. All right, let's do, oh, let's go all segment. So I'm gonna find my anchor. I'm holding down shift by the way. So I'm just dragging that out. That looks pretty good. And what I think I wanna do is I wanna take our circle here. I'm gonna hold down alt and what I'm looking to do is just duplicate this curve, so this front one right here, up to my, my top point. And I think I could probably just mimic it on this side. So I'm gonna click on C, that is our scissor tool. So I wanna get rid of all of that overlapping. I'm gonna click on minus, and there's gonna be a little bit of a stray, and I can get rid of that. Oh, let's do it. So I can grab both of those and centering so that is white arrow so I'm grabbing those two points notice that I moved to align to selection and then I just centered centered 
Now I can join it. And I might drop that back. I'm just going to get rid of that overlapping. Man, are we almost done? Get out. That was too easy. Too easy. I'm just going to go Control C, Control F. You could actually go Control B on that one. I'm going to rotate a little bit of a rotation. So from the sketch, I actually want these both to kind of tilt in a tiny bit. I don't need to be a hero, so let's just grab. Well, let's just slap it up there. So I'm going to grab that point, white arrow. And I think I want this one to have a little bit more of a rotation in. I want this one to have a little bit more of a rotation in. I am on Shift C, by the way. And then I can just grab that curve. And we might come in and modify this a tiny bit, but I just want a kind of a subtle curve for right now. All right, L, ellipse tool, shift X. So that'll swip it to just the nice little swap right there. So I'm just drawing on a nice little circle. Click on P. I think we have two more left. I'm gonna shove that right into, notice how there's all those little cross sections. Let's do that, shove it right there. So I'm just dragging out from that path. All right, let's do a little boogie check, control zero. All we are looking to do right now is I just wanna see if all of our lines are down. All right, let's go file save. So let's go through two options for cleanup. The most basic one is if I just select the shape, if I go shift E, this is the eraser, and I can just hide any of that overlapping within the stroke itself. So I can just say, hey, let's get rid of some of these things, any of this overlap. So notice I select it first, and then I'm just erasing the parts that I don't want. So that one is very straightforward, very user-friendly. If you have a tablet, this is a breeze. Very, very easy. All right, let's go Control A. Let's give you another option. The other option is I can come up and do the divide. Now, if you are really, really busy areas, just notice that all of these little overlaps, those all become brand new shapes. So if you don't like, hey, if you're having trouble selecting things or as we go through this, just realize that that eraser tool is usually your friend as long as you know what's in front and then you're not gonna have to come in and do all of these little guys. So if I click on divide, all of these things just got snipped. Just remember to ungroup. And now we get to come in and just look for any random little overlap and then click on delete. The only thing with that little divide is you will get these little floaters. So just really double check. Hey, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm looking for any little corner, especially with our strokes. Yours might be a little bit different than mine. So just depending on where the end of your stroke was, you might get these little random corners sticking out. So that is what you are zooming in and double checking. I'm gonna go control zero. We're gonna go file save. We are already done with that step. Look how easy this one is. Too easy. So I'm doing my magic wand. And now since everything is little tiny pieces, we're gonna bring them all back together. So I want to click on unite. Notice that all of those lines came back in nice and clean. I can get rid of our template layer at this point in time. Things are still selected, so now I want to, I'm just gonna duplicate it out. So this will be our inking, I'm gonna lock that guy out. Let's do a little bit of a coloring, and let's just lay down some flat colors right now. Now before I even do that, you might be able to see, so notice there's some little negatives. So if I see a negative, just use the magic wand, select them, and then just come in and click on delete. So since we are gonna be moving on to the live paint, that will affect it. You can just fill it in pretty easily, but just so you don't have to fill in a bunch of little randoms. I'm gonna come up to the top. Let's do live paint, make. The shortcut is K by the way. And now, what kind of colors do we wanna use? So let's just do some of the base first. Notice that it highlights nice and clean for us. And I'm just looking for kind of the, the face color. It's gonna highlight, and I'm just gonna color that in. I might, oh, let's switch that up. 
Let's go light. This one will be dark. And then we can always come in and modify from there. Now before I click off, I do want to take my whites, fill in our eyeballs. The idea right now, especially with the, the live paint, I'm a huge fan of it. It is filling in shapes for us. So that's really will knock out the use of, hey, I have to do Pathfinder for everything. So just notice that our live paint is in the shape builder menu over here in our tool menu. So it is building all the shapes that we want in the exact shape of what we need it. So we really get away from having to use a whole lot of Pathfinder. I am going to expand, just click on OK, and then we are going to ungroup. So just pay attention that I am in fact doing this three times or until I don't see it anymore. And you'll be able to tell that it is working that I can individually select those shapes again. All right, guys, save up. We are done with our little snail character. What I would like you guys to do is if you guys are following along, put into the comments, hey, I'm following along the tutorials. If there's anything specific that you would like to see, definitely put that in as well. So thanks for hanging out, and I will see you on the next one.